When I was in sixth grade, I went to go visit my little cousins at their house. Their house was right on the edge of these woods. And the woods were really thick and our parents always told us not to go there. And one time I asked my mom why. And she said, because when people do bad things, they sometimes go and hide in the woods. I was staying at my cousin's house for a week on this one trip. And whenever I was bored, I would go look out the window and watch the woods. Usually it was pretty boring and I would just be staring at trees. But one day it was like 5 p.m. and the sun was setting, so it was getting dark. And I saw something moving in the woods. I told my uncle and he said it was probably just an animal. And I told him, no, it was tall and looked like a skinny lady. And he said, I have a creative imagination and it was probably just a deer. But then a few minutes later, I heard my aunt and uncle whispering in the kitchen. My aunt was talking about a woman from a psychiatric hospital in their town who had escaped. Their house was like 15 minutes away from a maximum security psychiatric hospital for criminals with mental illness. And then they saw me listening to them in the doorway and they stopped talking completely. A few days later, in the middle of the night, I heard a noise downstairs. So I woke up in the middle of the night from this noise coming from downstairs. It sounded like something was scratching the back door. But when I got downstairs, the noise had stopped. But when I looked at the window facing the woods, there were footprints in the snow. But my aunt and uncle were really strict, and they had this rule that we weren't allowed to go in their room when they were sleeping. So I made sure all the doors were locked, and I decided I would tell them in the morning. The next morning we woke up, and it was a really intense blizzard. Such heavy snowfall that we couldn't see the ground. So when I told my aunt and uncle about the footprints, they didn't believe me and told me it was probably a nightmare. The next day I had to leave, and I didn't go back and visit my cousins for a long time. But the next summer, my cousins really wanted me to come for their birthday party. Before visiting them, I looked up whether they had ever found the woman who had escaped from the hospital. And Google said that authorities were still looking for her and it was a high priority case. When I got to their house, I was playing with my cousins. They were about to turn six years old. And one of them goes, let's go check if she's there. And my cousin runs to the window facing the woods. So I asked my other cousin who she was talking about. And she goes, oh, don't worry. That's just her imaginary friend. But I knew that did not sound right. So I asked my cousin more about her imaginary friend and she said she lives in the woods. And when I asked her if she ever spoke to her imaginary friend, she said no, just sometimes they wave to each other. And then when I asked if this imaginary friend was real, she shrugged and she said, maybe. So I really wasn't sure what to do because my cousin was always playing imaginary games and making up fake scenarios and she had had imaginary friends in the past, so it wasn't unlike her. But I kept thinking about the missing and insane asylum patient and it just seemed eerie and coincidental. The next day was my cousin's birthday party. They invited all their friends and they had a pool party. When all the little girls were done swimming, I hung up all their bathing suits on a clothing line that was strung from their house to a tree on the perimeter of the woods. Later in the afternoon, afternoon, everyone wanted to go swimming again, but when I went to get their bathing suits, one was missing. So one of the girls had to swim in a t-shirt and shorts. But when we were all in the pool, I noticed in the corner of my eye that there was something blue in the woods. So I got out of the pool and I walked a little bit closer, but I was timid because I was super scared of the woods. And as I got closer, I realized it was the girl's bathing suit. At first I thought maybe the wind had blown it, but then I realized there was absolutely no wind that day. And even weirder, the way it was hung up on the tree looked like someone had put it there. It didn't look like it was blown there. It was hung there really neatly. The day after the pool party, my uncle was like, damn, you guys really went to town on the pickles. And we were all like, what? And he's like, I bought that huge jar of pickles from Costco last week and they're all gone. Didn't you guys eat them at the birthday party? And I was like, we didn't have any pickles at the party. I'm really allergic to cucumbers. And then my little cousin was like, my imaginary friend loves pickles. They're her favorite food. And finally, for the first time, it seemed like my uncle was actually freaked out by this imaginary friend. So my aunt and my uncle ended up seriously asking my little cousin a lot about this imaginary friend of hers. And I actually ended up leaving a day early because it just started to get kind of serious and it was time for me to go. The next week I was at the park near my house and I got a text from my mom telling me to come straight home. When I got home, she was there and she was sitting down and she told me she had something serious to tell me, which was that they had found the missing patient from the hospital near my cousin's house. She had been living in the woods right by their house. And she was able to survive so long on her own in the woods because my little cousin would give her food from their house.